Hey everyone, welcome to Pop Off Workshop. I still get tons of questions on how to take care of your lasers and CNC machines and deal with problems when the carving or the engraving doesn't go right. The last video, I showed you how to do some maintenance on the lenses and even change the lens on the laser. Today, I want to be able to show you another real easy way to be able to fix your lasers to get better engraves and better cars with the CNC machines. It's the same thing. One of the biggest problems that people have or the belts and the wheels are not tensioned correctly. And there's a real easy fix for it. To tension the belts, there is a little bit of difference between the different machines, but not that much. Here, you just have a little set screw, and on the X tool, you have this little uh, bracket right here to tension the belts. Belts are one of the items that will stretch over time. That's just a fact of nature, and it's going to happen, and you're gonna to have to adjust them periodically. How do you know if the belts are loose? Well, one of the simplest ways is just lift up your machine and tilt it. If it slides very easily at a very shallow angle, guess what? The belts are loose. Oh, let's look at it this way. See how it slides real easy? The belts on this are too loose. Let me show you how to fix that. Now, the same thing applies if I tilt it this way. You can see how this is moving much, much slower. So this belt has not stretched as much, but I think I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit anyway. This is what you're looking for when you're checking to see if those belts have stretched and if it's time to be able to tighten them a little bit. This screw right here puts tension on the belt. All I need to be able to do is just loosen this just a little bit. And now I'll be able to pull and add tension to it. I'll do the same thing to the other side. That's it. Now I can pull this and get the extra tension. I'm gonna try to pull it even and then tighten that back. We'll do the same thing over here. And now we can raise this up much, much better. Let's test this out and see how it's doing. Just a little bit and it makes all the difference in the world. You can see now how I can hold this up and it's very slowly coming down. Much better. And see that again? Tilt that down to about a 40 degree angle and it just slowly slides down. That's what you want. So that's perfect. So it took just a second to be able to tighten this and that's gonna make the, the engravings much better. Let's do the same thing on the uh, x-axis. Just put just a little bit of tension on it and we'll tighten it right back down. There we go. Let's check it out. And that may be a little bit too tight. That's how you check it. If that's too tight, we're gonna loosen it just a little bit. Tighten it back, check it again, and that runs better. Now that takes care of the belts. To check the tension on this, the belts, let's raise this up. And you can see how it will very slowly move down as I get to that 45 degree angle. So the tension on the belts on this is real good. So I'm happy with that. But how do you adjust the belts? Let me show you real quick. On the X tool, you have this screw right here that actually is used to put tension on the belt. And that, you can see, will go through the back of the frame. This is the screw that you would tighten or loosen to be able to adjust the tension of the belt. On this side, there is a screw that holds that tension. So we need to loosen that one first. And then we can adjust and tighten this one to take care of those belts. So this screw holds the tension. This screw right here adjust the tension and you can tighten or loosen the belts. And you can see how that works right here 
when you tighten this screw, it will tighten these belts. It'll pull this whole little mechanism backwards. The set screw is right over here on this side. So there's that little set screw right down there that holds the tension once you have that set. Real simple design, very effective. What about the wheels themselves? How do we adjust the wheels? How do we know these wheels are tight? This is what I want you to look for on the wheels. On different machines, you're gonna have different setups, but you're gonna have a straight bushing like this. It may be on both sides as this one is, or it may be just on one side. Well, the straight bushing is not where you adjust it. That is just a spacer to be able to have this centered in the track for the wheel to be able to roll on. What you're looking for is the nut that you can adjust. And that's the eccentric nut. Let me show you where that's located. But first I wanna show you what an eccentric nut is. Now I actually don't have one, and if I did, it would probably be too small for you to be able to see. So the next best thing is to show you a picture and a diagram of what it looks like. In this drawing, you can see in the simplest form is that the hole in the center of the nut is offset. And that's really what an eccentric nut is. I went over to the Inventable site and you can see a picture of one where that hole is offset. And that is what allows you to be able to tension the wheels. Look at this animation. As this nut turns, you can see how that wheel turns and would put tension onto that track. Right here, you have a nut, and on the other side, you have the spacer. This is the eccentric nut, and this is what you can actually adjust. By turning this ever so slightly, you can then test it, and you can see if this turns and it spins, it's too loose. So we can tighten that a little bit more, and let's see which way we're going. And now we're beginning to make this wheel roll. And we need to tighten that just a little bit more. And then when I roll and push this, you can see how now this is turning and rolling. It's just that easy. I'll tighten it just a hair more because I want to be able to use my finger and be able to push that wheel and have that wheel turn and have this laser head be able to roll. And that's perfect. So I needed to be able to tighten that, as you can see. You can also move this, and if you have any type of wobbling, you know that that is too loose. If you look at the y-axis, you're going to have the same thing. On top, you're going to have the two bushings that are plain. And you have to look to the bottom to be able to find the actual eccentric nut. That's where it's going to be located. I can put my fingers on the wheel and roll it. And I can tell that that's working real well. And if I just push the gantry by itself and feel the wheel, I can feel that the wheels are turning. So the tension on that is actually good. If I needed to make adjustment, it would be the same exact way and I would try to adjust both sides equally so that it runs smooth. But this looks and feels very good. On the CNC machines, you have the same type of setup. Right here is that bottom wheel, and that is the eccentric nut right there that you would adjust to tighten or loosen. And of course, there's another one over on the back side. And those two will adjust the tension on your y-axis and if you notice up top, these wheels do not have that nut. No nut there. The only thing you can do here is just tighten the wheel when you put it on. There's no eccentric nut to be able to adjust. So again, this is the eccentric nut right here that you would be adjusting. If we look at the gantry, you can see that how this up here on top there is no eccentric nut. This is that eccentric nut here, and that would be able to tighten or loosen the wheel to make sure that the gantry is moving correctly. Again, all these different machines with the wheels are gonna have that type of an eccentric nut to be able to adjust. And they'll be located on both sides. 
Here's the eccentric nut on the other side, and you can see up top, there's not one. And that's where you'd make that adjustment, right there. The other thing I want you to be able to do is look at the debris along this track that this wheel rides in. Make sure that that gets cleaned off also. And you can see a little bit of debris right there. And that will just literally wipe off. And that's what you want to do on all of the tracks because that can cause a problem. I just finished doing a project with the CNC machine and you can see there's a little bit of debris right there on the track. For the most part, that track is clear. What I will typically do is just use either my finger to be able to wipe it off or just use a simple old toothbrush and brush it off. And that takes care of it. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And that just takes a moment to be able to do. The other thing I want you to look at is the wheels themselves. Make sure that the wheels are clean. And let me show you a wheel that's a little bit easier to be able to see. Do the same thing. Clean that wheel. And then we can rotate this. Clean that wheel. And do that all the way around until that wheel is clean. And you're going to do the same thing on the other wheels. So here's the other wheel. We're going to slide it just a little bit. I'm going to roll it. Clean that wheel. And just like that, it's done. That wheel's done. Check the track. Make sure it's clear. And that's all taken care of. Now I'll move over to the back side and do the same thing. I want this entire track clean on all sides. You can see those wheels are clean. You can see the track that it rides in is clean now. Over here on this side, these wheels are clean. This track is all clean. And it only takes just a matter of a couple minutes to be able to do this. And your machine will run so much better. And on this, do the same thing. Make sure that the track on this top side is clean as well as the bottom side. I'll slide this over. I can dust this off. Most of the debris will come off at that point, but if there's a little bit more, you can just brush it off with a toothbrush and make it look good. The wheels, same thing. Take care of these wheels. You can also look to see if they're tight and loose at this point too, because if they spin freely, then you need to adjust them. Now at this point, it looks real easy to be able to clean all of this, but keep in mind, I do this after every single carve, so the particles disappear quickly. Now I have seen different videos where people's machines were just caked on very, very uh, thick with debris, and that definitely will cause problems. If you do this after each and every carve, the machine will be able to work much, much better and as it was designed to. So this is an important step to be able to make sure that your machine stays clean, and then this becomes a very easy process. Now there's the little stubborn spot right there that I needed to be able to clean, but just imagine this. If I had not cleaned this machine on a regular basis, there would be a lot more stubborn uh, places on not only the wheels, but on the track, and the cleaning process would be much, much more difficult. So please take the time to do this after each carve. And that takes care of the wheels on this side, and I'll move over and do the same thing on the other side. Just dust off the debris. And I can look a little bit further down and clean that track. So just a little bit of maintenance will make your machine carve so much better. Now I'm going to move over and do the other side off camera. Don't forget the back half of your track. I'm going to dust it off to begin with. 
and you can see the majority of the debris is gone because I do this all the time. And I can just take my finger and run it right along there and that removes it. But if I do have that stubborn spot, a little bit of with the toothbrush and that'll take care of it. You can see the dust on there. And when I take the brush, And brush that away you can see the track perfectly clean and we'll do the same thing underneath and yeah that looks really good this may be the boring part of running a cnc machine and the lasers but it's a very important part please don't forget this when you're doing this little bit of cleaning look for everything else too look for loose screws look for wires that are broken look for anything that can go wrong that will mess up your carve and cause a problem Fix it now before it becomes an issue. These wires on the limit switches, yeah, they have a tendency to break from time to time. So just check them just to make sure that everything is good. Because I get questions all the time where people are saying, wow, it's not working, something's happening. And a lot of times it's a loose wire. And I'll dust this off too. Be careful when you're dusting that you don't cause damage to the wires. Now, hopefully this will answer a lot of the questions that I have had about how to be able to keep that machine running smoothly and hopefully avoid some of the questions on the carve or the engraving didn't come out right and it's not carving a round circle or the engraving's not square, whatever it happens to be. Oftentimes, the problem will end up being back at this, lack of maintenance or the belts are too loose, too tight or the wheels too loose or too tight. Simple fix and it will make the carvings go so much better. So please keep that in mind. On the 3D printer, you have the same thing. You have the spacer up here, and that spacer is designed so that wheel will ride directly into that track. And you have the same thing on the other side. You have the spacer there, but the eccentric nut is down to bottom. It is underneath. If you look right down there, that's where it is located. Right there is the eccentric nut that you can adjust and tighten the tension. And of course you have two of them on this machine and you can see them clearly right there. They adjust these at the factory, but sometimes in shipping they'll get loose and you need to make that adjustment. So I wanna take this opportunity to thank everybody for watching the video today. And if you're still with me, I wanna be able to shout out anybody. If you give a super thanks, I'll mention you right here and be able to answer the question and I'll do that on the different videos. In addition to be able to email back and answer your questions. I also wanna thank the Patreons for supporting this channel. Your support is invaluable and I really appreciate it. These machines will take care of you, whether it's the lasers such as this or the CNC's behind me. If you take care of them, they'll take care of you and you'll be able to produce good quality engravings and carvings. So again, thank you for watching this video today, and I look forward to seeing you real soon in the shop again. So for now, bye-bye.